All right, so in this video, what we're gonna talk about is an FAL instruction. Now, what this instruction does is it basically loads uh, parameter, or not parameters, but data. It can transfer data easily, incrementally, or actually all at one time. So it's a very versatile uh, you know, instruction. So let's go ahead and get that. Uh, we can simply type in FAL up here, and you can get the instruction that way or you can use your, your information up here and go over to your instruction bar, go to file and miscellaneous, um, then your FAL instruction will be right there. I'm a huge fan of like, just if I'm starting out and that's my very first instruction of just, just typing it out. If I know what I'm doing, you know, if I know what I'm trying to do, uh, trying to accomplish. So what we're gonna do is first the control, we need to give it a name, right? So let's give it a name. And let's call this, uh, this is going to be uh, FAL, and we'll call this example. <clears throat> and I always spell example wrong, so <laughs> that seems to be the going rate for at least the last seven years. Um, so what we want to do is we want to have a length in here. We want to have a length of how many we're going to actually, you know, transition. We want to have a mode. We can do all. We can, meaning we can do, we can transmit all data, right? Let's actually blow this up just a tad. Um, zoom in just a little bit so you can see that. So we have two things. We have all or increment, right? So we can increment the data every time something, every time this instruction is issued, or we can move all of the data. So, um, and I'll show you that. We'll do all at very first. And first, let's go ahead and make ourselves. And this is going to be using like a raise, um, something that you can, you, you know, you can transfer a lot of data from, like say recipe systems, um, for instance, like different uh, data tracking systems that you may be doing. Um, there's a lot of different case use cases for this, but let's go ahead and put um, just to keep this simple. We'll call this data data base or data array array one <clears throat> now what we want to do we call it an array right so we want to have the dimensions of at least 10 um, and I say at least 10 you can have it more than you know more or less right um, but I'm just going to use 10 for my dimensions so it has an array of data all right so we'll go ahead and put that in and then we're going to do the same thing for data we're going to call this data array 2 now we're going to have the same exact dimensions. Okay. So this is very important that your data types have to match so that you don't like, uh, if you try to load something like shift, uh, 10, 10, uh, a dimension, like all 10 arrays into the next thing. And it's maybe it's only nine arrays. You will actually hard fault your processor. So you don't want to do that. Make sure it's very important that you make sure your dimensions for both of your data types are identical or at least that your first your your destination is bigger or greater than your actual expression so <clears throat> we have our data uh, data type two right here um really our data type one is going to be again something that is going to be our destination um, the expression right here is going to be basically the data we're going to be moving so now this doesn't look done there's a lot of question marks and i'll show you exactly why because you have to put this in brackets and what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab this uh, our actual uh, control up here and i'm going to put in brackets this is kind of similar to indirect addressing you're going to put in brackets and then you're going to put in the instruction and you're going to put dot pso and then you're going to close the bracket off and what that does is it indirectly points to each section of that array. Just like we did in indirect addressing, uh, what we're trying to do is indirectly point to that section of that array. We're going to do the same thing for down here. Um, so keep that in mind. We're going to put that right here, .pos. And this will all make perfect sense in just a second. So you see, now we have an expression. Right? So we have an expression of what we want to load, whatever the value of this position is, into or from this array, we want to load it into 
this the same position of that of a different array right so just keep in mind that's the that's how we're doing that and if we were doing in, incremental you could see that a little bit different so let's let's start off with incremental so you can see it all right so the length is going to be 10 because we have how many arrays we have 10 okay so we're going to go 0 through 9 right so if you look at our information we're going to actually pop the information up as far as the monitor data one you can see and this keep in mind this program had zero programming in it whatsoever zero tags to keep it simple keep it very uh, understandable so we have two arrays that we made zero data one array our data array one is zero through nine data array two is zero through nine again that's ten points right zero through nine Okay, so again, we have that, we understand that. So let's actually go up here and let's do a toggle. So we'll just say, um, uh, move command. <clears throat> so uh, we'll say move data, All right? So we'll move data command. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to have this, now keep in mind, we have nothing in here so far, right? So let me just let me just say this. If I put like a one, a two, two, three, four, and I'm just giving you an example, right? So no, this is not uh, any kind of use case or nothing like that. I'm I'm showing you how this this instruction works. So just keep in mind. So let's just do one through eight. So right now, if I trigger that and I increment it. It's only only going to increment one time, so it's going to do the very first position. And if we go up here, we can see that we moved to the very first position. Now, if I increment that once more, it's going to load in another one. So now we're in position two. So this indirect addressing is pointing to the second part of data array two. And then it's grabbing that information and loading it into the second part of data array one. And you can see that. So you see my data is full over here, right? My, all my data is full. I have one through seven or one through eight right now. So you see, and, and in data one, which is our destination, all we have is one and two. Now, again, when it comes down to it, let's do this so you can change things up a little bit. Let's put uh let, let's come over here and put uh we'll do the let's just do the binary of this so that's zero two we'll do four eight sixteen kind of like a state machine if you would <clears throat> indirectly um <laughs> 64 um and I'm just using the binary coded decimal on this. So just keep that in mind. 28. <clears throat> and this is going to be 254. And this very last one is going to be 512. Okay. So that will be our binary for that. So if you looked at the binary, you could see that is that bit. Okay. So we currently have what we have in here right now. That's already preloaded. Now let's go ahead and shift this whole thing and change it from incremental mode to all. So if we want to move all the data as soon as we, we actually issue this command, then, and I'll show you this, right now you can see the data, right? You can see that data array one is still filled with the same data it was before. Now I've changed data array two to work off the binary coded decimal. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, uh, 254, and then uh, 512. So what we're gonna do is we're going to move all of that data in one instance. So you see, now I can see that I've moved all of my data that was in array, array two into array one. So you see how powerful that is. You can do one, you can move one thing, and you can also come back and, and, and uh, move 
just you can move all of them if you want to or you can move just a single one and that's very 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 powerful because again I've used these uh, things for you know like fault tracking for uh, data collecting data moving so that I could actually store it into an array and then I would average it out um, you can do different things like that you can do multiple things I mean the the use cases for these are very prominent um, again when it comes down to, to it my goal here is to actually show you how this system works how to set it up and how to get it to work now essentially I should data array one should have been aware of data array two is but again just to show you how that system works again let's let's uh, put in one more wrong uh, not to take up too much of your time and let's move um, let's actually we'll have to do a fill so we'll do a fill and we'll fill data array one uh, let's put that yeah there we go a length of 10 and so I'm also going to do a fill and what this fill is going to do is it's going to actually <clears throat> source so my source is going to be zeros um, my, my uh, data array one right here I'm gonna to have to point to the very first one but I'm gonna load this right so I'm gonna load zeros into all of data one and let's go ahead and put a bit in and let's, let's say clear let's just say clear for that instance clear data array one okay so we have that there and now I'll show you a different way so now we'll come in and we'll actually clear that so if I clear this data what do you expect to happen all the data inside of data array one is now clear now <clears throat> if I come back over here and I start doing if I change this back to incremental instead of all change it to incremental then what we have is going to be a single point of moving so it's only going to move that very first point okay and if I do it again and let's say I do it three times then we should have three points of data and we do we have one zero one two and you can see all of it start moving in now again um, this could be triggered on many different things like say if you had a fault you could be tracking a fault you could be saying okay well um, the system faulted out so I want to use incremental mode so I can actually increment down one and track a, a, a large like maybe the date and time of the fault um, you can do that you know you can do the date and time of that of that fault I mean there's many many different things you can do with this so just keep in mind just because I'm using a simple data array doesn't mean you can't use like a date and time stamp or something like that or something that could track uh, when a specific fault happened like say you were working on a, a system and you thought you had it fixed but you wanted to put some kind of fault tracking in because you're not going to be there 24 7 right but you want to come back the next day and say did that fault really happen or how many times did that fault occur you could do something like this so it's a very powerful tool um, so with that said hopefully you learned a lot from this video you you actually learned how an FAL instruction is implemented how you could use it, the possible outcomes of real world scenarios that you could probably use it, use this in. Again, when it comes down to it, this is, I, I know these videos when they get kind of long like this are very much like, you know, just do take them one at a time as you go. You know, if this is a little bit much for you, this, this uh, 15 minute video today, then only do that one video and then come back the next day and then, you know, actually progress from there. But make sure you do the task too. Make sure you do exactly what I did so you understand uh, the muscle memory behind actually doing something as you watch it will actually teach you and, and it will actually retain a lot better. So with that said, hopefully you learned a lot from this video and we'll see you guys on the next one.